never see riches. Lord, I'll serve you still. If I lose all my possessions and my health began.
Good evening. Welcome to Asaw Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to leave this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise and the blessings of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrections are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at Asaw Community Church, where serving and giving begins. Just come before you this evening to bless you, to worship you, and give you the glory that you are due. We have gathered here corporately, Lord God, to acknowledge you. And <laughs> you're so wonderful, Lord God, and we just want to glorify you this evening, Lord God. So we open up our hearts to you so that you get the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. Higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant through the trials and the change. One thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives, 
it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, your love, your love. that I face You are stronger than the power of the grave And I never ever had to be afraid One thing remains One thing remains Your love never fails It never gives It never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up it never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. You love, you love, you love. It goes on and on and on and on it goes. And it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And you see, I never ever have to be afraid. This one thing. It never runs out on me, your love. Oh Lord, I thank you, your love. Your love, it never fails, it never fails. Your love, it never fails. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me, your love. Your love. Your love, your love, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we can be confident in your love, Father. Hallelujah. And it is your goodness and your mercy, Lord God, that we can be here in this place tonight, Lord God, to just to love on you, Father. <laughs> it's not anything that we do. It's all of what he has already done. So we're just thankful. We're grateful. We are so thankful. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord.
Jesus we're waiting here straight from heaven, from your heart to ours, Lord. Father God, we lay bare before you. We surrender our hearts to you. We give you our full attention, Lord, for you to have your way in us, in this place, that you would get the fruit that you so desire out of us. You cause us to be fruitful, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless you, Sister Perkins, for what you have brought to this ministry this evening. I am extremely happy with our musicians, Mr. Jared Black and Mr. Teddy Wright. I am thankful that God has sent us some people who are equipped to do praise and worship and allow you just to touch heaven before you hear a word about heaven that I pray strengthens your tomorrow today. That's the beautiful part about the word is that we can sing and we can and, and feel that in our spirit, but it's that word that resonates in our minds and our hearts that allows us to draw closer to God. It's what we depend on. It impacts our lives as we go about impacting the lives of others. So I'm extremely thankful to have Roger and Gloria back. They've been gone a few weeks. And just like everyone that's moving in ministry, Roger and Gloria back, and Terrell is up visiting her mama, so we are asking, did I say mama? <laughs> visiting her mama. So we are asking for safe traveling grace for her. And it's good to have Karen here and her aunt. Yeah. It's indeed a privilege to have you here, and we just want you to feel welcome, and we hope that the people here have made you feel welcome as you come through the doors of the house of the Lord, because anytime you come through the door, you should feel welcome and understand that it's the spirit of the people that resonate from God to you. So we say thank you and welcome. As the pastor of Asar Community Church, when the Lord laid it on my heart to plant this church, it was two things that I know for a fact he desired of Asar. That is praise and worship and to hear a word. And tonight I'm going to continue part two of the message I started last week called Give, Grow, and Go. That, that, that's, a simple, that's a simple set of words. Give, grow, 
Growth, growth comes from what? Growth comes from your giving, and then you move. You keep going. This is not a, 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 a do something one time and stop ministry. Ministry is ongoing. So you ought to be equipped to give, and from your giving you grow, and from that growth you go. So last week, my message centered around Acts chapter 20, verse 35, but I read for your hearing chapter 20, but verses 16 through 36. And so right now, if you don't mind, I'd like to just recap what those verses entail. Acts chapter 20, verses 16 through 36. And basically what is going on in Acts, Luke, the author, of Acts is giving us a narrative of Paul's journey and, and the ministry. And, and, and if you understand the Bible, it is, written, it is written from experiences of people to do what? To allow you to connect and to grow from it. So in Acts chapter 20, we're talking about Paul, and Paul is talking to the church, and he says, you know, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many uh, tears. In ministry, in order to be effective, you must have a level of humility. And when you are doing ministry, it's going to come with some tears. It just comes with the territory because of your commitment to God. And he goes on to say, I have endured these trials. Because when you are called for an assignment, God will give you the strength to endure whatever it is that's a part of the journey. And then he goes on to say, I have told you the truth, one of my favorite words, the truth. Why is truth so important? Because if someone gives you the truth, your foundation is secure. And he says, no matter where I stood, whether it be public or private, I gave you the truth. I preached and I taught a message that would sustain your life. That's the beautiful thing about truth. Then he goes on to say, I don't know what awaits me, but I'm going to follow my assignment and allow the Holy Spirit to cover me. That's how we ought to operate. We ought to operate knowing that the assignment is going to come with some challenges, but if God has put you in that position to do ministry, the Holy Spirit will not only cover you, but lead you through the things that you will endure. Yeah. Yeah. So he knew that jail and suffering awaited him, but yet he went. What is life if you were not performing or executing or doing the assignment? What, 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 is, what is life if there is an assignment or a purpose or a call on your life and you are not doing it? Meaning the assignment. And why is that so important? Because the assignment that you are given specifically will bless others and give God the glory. Amen. So he says, I have been faithful. And as he is about to depart, saying, I may not see you again on this side. What I want you to do is guard yourselves. Be faithful because you are God's people. But in all that I have given you, I have given you the truth. And when someone gives you the truth, you ought to be able to stand and see false teaching and false doctrine. That, that, that's why I talk so much. I do. That's why I talk about a lot of stuff. People say you're always talking about this, that, and the other. I talk about it because you need to be aware so that when you see it and hear it, you know that's not of God. But if nobody ever talks about it, how do you know if, if it's right or wrong? The only way to know what is right or wrong is to, one, hear the truth, and two, study for yourself and allow the Holy Spirit. Because there will be some false teachings. There will be some people who have an agenda. So he says, watch out. Watch out. That's what he tells him. He says, watch out. Because it's going to come. It's going to come. 
Verse 34 says this, yes, you yourselves know that these hands, meaning his, have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. My, my, my hands have done the assignment, what was necessary, has provided these hands. My, 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 my walk, my, my connection to God, you have seen it. And then that brings us down to verse number 35, where we will pick it up tonight, verse 35. On last week, I talked about giving. And the reason why I was talking about giving is because so many people were saying to me that this church would receive more if we had other entities for people to give, which I disagreed with. Because I disagreed with it because if people are willing to give, they will find a way. That people will. And I said that there's two ways that people give. One is connection. And two is cause. Connection meaning I have people that sow into Esau because of friendships with me or things I have done for them or just being members or friends or are blessed by this ministry. That is connection. That is the way I desire people to give. Connection. Or there is cause. As I said last week, the player from Buffalo who had the heart attack, he, he has set up a GoFundMe to raise some money to help buy some toys for kids who were underprivileged. And his GoFundMe budget, or what he uh, uh, um, put out there was, he was just trying to raise $2,500. But after his heart attack on the field, he became worldwide and his story became a blessing to so many that they were inspired, including me. I reached out to LaDonna, we're gonna have some CPR classes here and we are currently trying to buy a defibrillator to have because of the impact of that young man's life. But because of the cause, his, his GoFundMe has now surpassed $9 million. Now here's the problem with cause. When it, it, it's over, it's done. Here's the thing with connection. It doesn't die because that connection is there. So, so if I have to create a cause to generate people to give, then I have to always be generating causes because eventually they stop. They don't continue to sow into those forever. So, 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 so the whole crux of this was to understand that it does not make a difference. The entity in which you give, giving is something that you should want to give based upon whatever you're given to has done for you. So what we must create here is an atmosphere where people want to sow into us because of what we are doing that they are connected to. That's the beautiful part about giving. Giving is in your heart. That's what God requires of us today. Give as God has blessed you what is in your heart. And, and so so I want to, I really want to jump into Acts chapter 20, verse number 35, because it's going to bring the point home. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, New King James Version reads, I have shown you in every way, still talking about Paul, and again, remember this, this is written by Luke talking about Paul, and he's saying, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak, and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ that he said. That he said. That, that, and, and, and all the pastor is doing or a preacher is doing or a teacher is doing is repeating what he said. So don't, don't, don't get mad at me. Understand that it's in the word that he said it's more blessed to give than to Receive. This, this, is, this, is, this is Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It says it's, it's more blessed. Now, in this giving, do you see a dollar amount? Do you see a, a, a dollar club 
Do you see a line needs to be formed and do you need to have it in your hand and you, you don't see nothing other than the word of God. Say, it says that he said, meaning Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to receive. So let's, let's break down this verse. It starts off with, I have shown you in every way. Meaning, Paul is saying, listen church, I, I have taught you the instructions. I have given you the examples and I as the man of God who has planted these churches and gone from city to city I have labored in this position because I respect the assignment and I respect who gave me the assignment okay pastors listen to this listen to this you have taught people the instructions. Make sure that the instructions you are teaching are correct and truthful and show them in the word of God the examples of what you are preaching. It got to line up. It gotta, if it doesn't line up, I'm telling you, if it does not line up, there is an agenda behind it. So I want the power to be in your hands because guess what? Again, this whole journey is a personal relationship between you and God. We just get to benefit from it. So he says, I have shown you all things in every way. I've ministered to the needs of others. Is that not our assignment? Ministering to the needs of others? Helping those who need help? See, again, remember, we're to help, not take responsibility. Help. Help. And in helping, give instructions. In helping, be the example. And I'm going to show you why you were in the position to help. And the help is for the gospel. The money that comes in is for ministry. It's, it's for gospel. It ain't for me to buy a car. I can buy whatever car I want based upon whatever I receive for doing whatever job I do. That's it. That's how you get a car. That's how you, well, that's how you should get a car. Credit score, money, car. A lot of money. Don't worry about a credit score. Pay cash. But at the end of the day, the ministry is what money should come in. The money should come into this house for ministry. So if there's a connection to the ministry, it comes in. If there's not, then I got to create a cause, which I'm not doing. It's either connection or nothing. But since we're God, guys, he provides. I don't have to worry about that because he guided us here. And if he guides us somewhere else, I'm going to trust that too. So he says, I have shown you all things in every way. So if you are helping, you have understood the assignment. If you're giving, you have understood the instructions. So he says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must, that's what it says, you must support the weak. That's our assignment. Is that not what Jesus said when he departed? Help those in need spread the gospel? What else is there? What, what else is a, a mandate? That is a mandate that we must do these things based upon our or your confession. So nobody should have to prompt you or, 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 or put up some, something to generate you to do what the word said you should do based upon the word that you say you believe in, you trust in. See, so that's why sometimes when I'm sitting there listening to this stuff, I go, that ain't got nothing to do with God. That's, that's them. That's them. They ain't got nothing to do with God. You know how you can tell they ain't got nothing to do with God? Because none of that that they're doing is in the word. What's in the word is give. What's in the word is from your heart. What's in the word is the woman who gave two bits gave more than all of them because she gave all that she had. She gave from her heart. That's what God is honoring. Your heart. I don't care if you can write a check for $1.5 million. If it does not come from your heart. So it goes on to say. It says. It says. And remember. Meaning. If you to remember something. Some, there had to have been a conversation. Now, 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 now. What in this verse is more blessed to give? It said that Jesus said it's more blessed to give than receive. It's not in the Gospels. 
Okay? Let's get that straight. It's not in the Gospels. So people will say, well, wait a minute. If it's not in the Gospel, how do we know Jesus said it? Well, here's how you can tell Jesus said it. In John chapter 21, verse 25, it says, and there are also many other things that Jesus did which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. That's in the gospel. So you're saying, well, well, how do we know Jesus said it? Well, because in conversation with people, we say some things. Have you not said some things to somebody in conversation? And when you said it, somebody said, oh, that's good. It wasn't written nowhere. You didn't document it. It just all of a sudden something in your spirit said, let me share this word. And it blessed somebody. And then that blessing grew because that person took that and shared it with somebody. You know, it, it, it's sayings. It's not written. Is it? You heard that saying, it is what it is. That's a saying. You know what happened? Somebody came up with that. Somebody just said, how you feel? Hey, man, it is what it is. And next thing you know, it's all over. So in here it says, and remember, remember the author is writing this because he is narrating things that have transpired. He says, and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. That right there, that right there tells me, wait a minute, pause. Remember, and who is saying it? That's what's paramount. Paramount. It's not one of the disciples. It's Jesus who is saying this. So if Jesus is saying this, then there has to be some validity to it. It has to have some type of impact. Why? Because Jesus said it. So remember. Remember. He uses the word remember for you not to forget what it is that's important when it comes to these two things, giving and receiving. That's powerful in itself. It, it, it should make you want to, at every opportunity, give. Because if you are giving, that means you have. And if you are giving, you're going to be more blessed. And if you're more blessed, you're going to always have something to give. And if you always have something to give, not only are you blessed, but whoever you're helping is blessed too. The problem is people, you no, know, some get stingy. Some try to circle their own wagons. And, and the Bible tells you specifically, it tells you emphatically that giving is essential. I told a friend of mine, he said, what are you going to preach about? I told him I was going to preach about that. He said, you're going to preach about giving again? I said, it's, it's, see, see, see you, you, you missed the point. You missed the point. There's a setup to all this. It ain't, it ain't, see, first of all, this is not to get people's money. Because I can tell you right now, people are only going to give if they want to give, no matter what you say. No matter, it, it, again, again, like I said, when we had that service with Keith Wonderboy, we had over 12,000 views. We did not receive one dollar, not one offering from not one of the 12,000 views. But had he said these words at the end, I was looking for a place to sing and this pastor blessed me. Why don't y'all bless him? I guarantee you. Because now all of a sudden there would have been a connection. There had been a connection. So, so, so the message is, is, is not about giving. It's about understanding giving and the place it has in ministry. And it ought to be authentic. That, that's what the message is about. That's, that's what it's about. So, 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 so. I have shown you in everything. Because again, what I got to do as a pastor, I got to give you an example. I got to preach in truth. And then I have to live up to the very thing that I'm talking about. I have to live up until the very thing I'm talking about, you know, because I believe in giving. I tell all my friends that 35 years, I tell them all, the key has always been in giving, in, in giving, and in just, and it's not big. You ain't got to do big, just do something. That's it, just a seed, something. You know, they charge me on the ship. They charge me for them to clean my room every day. Now, I don't like them jokers in my room. I don't like the way certain people clean. 
I'm a little clean phobic myself, so I bring my own stuff. But I pay them every single day for them to clean, although they don't clean. Then on the last day, I give them an additional to clean that day. And they always look at it perplexed. Like, well, I haven't done anything for you. And I'm going, no, I'm in the ability to do. And I know which country you're from, and I know this is going to make a big difference in your life. And, and, and guess what? And God is going to always put me in position because he knows I'm not going to keep it all to myself. So he's just giving. And, and I'm telling you, it blesses. And, and, and I know it, it helped because somebody else I had done that to, I didn't, know, I didn't know the guy. I didn't know him. I was looking for the little store on the ship. But because I had done him the same way, he says, oh, I know him. Come with me. I'll take you. From a gift I gave him maybe two, three years ago. That's the beautiful part about giving. So let's go to the rest of that verse. It says it's more blessed to give than to receive. For those who minister to the people of God, for those who truly, truly operate the church as a ministry, we are blessed to give. <laughs> That's what this whole thing is about. Ministry. We're operating as a ministry. And it is a blessing to do what? To be able to give. But see, here's the problem. People think that out there that the we should be, just give freely. And we should. But you need some instructions. Because ain't it truly amazing that people who always ask it don't go to a church? All they do is go to because they know the church is supposed to do this, and so they tap all of them. And trust me, when you've been on my side as long as I've been on my side, just as four short years, you will hear every story, and they will make it seem so bleak, not knowing that you just heard that story from the other person. Lady said, "Oh, I just need some gas to get down to Florida because her boyfriend has beat her almost senseless, and we need to go down there and get her and bring her back." And I said, "Oh my." God, that is, that is terrible. Let me give you some water for your journey. And some people are like, well, why would you give her water? Because it's a story. Because she was back on the same corner the next week. Right. Now what's the story? You got to have a, a, a spirit of discern. But I still gave. I gave her some water for the trip. So it says it's more blessed to give than to receive. So as pastors, as leaders, we should be more concerned about what we give the people. This position should be more concerned about what we give you. We need to be giving you the tools. We need to be giving you the uh, instructions. We need to be the example as Christ was the example. We need to be giving you more than being worried about what y'all can give us. Now that's the true assignment right there. I don't care what nobody say. Put it on TikTok. I don't care. I'm telling you our responsibility. If we're going to lead, we must lead as the example led. The example was humble. The example came to serve. So if that's my model. Now I'm just going to say this about me. I don't need all that stuff. I don't need all that. It was Pastor Appreciation Month the whole month of October. I don't think but maybe one person said, happy Pastor. We, I don't even think we paid no attention to it. Why? Because that's not part of the assignment. The assignment is to preach. My reward comes in heaven for doing the job. It says it in the word. It says it. You want to do something, do it. But I'm not going to hold no, y'all know on the first, first week of June, that's the pastor's birthday, we need to do all this stuff. And, but everybody else has a birthday. So it's more blessed to give than to receive. Your giving blesses you. When God can trust your giving, he expands your ability to do it. That's why I get tired of hearing churches, won't he do it? Won't he do this? Won't he open up this? But they never tell you how. 
All your breakthrough is coming through. Your break, no, ain't, no, listen, listen. Ain't no breakthrough coming through if you're not doing the assignment. There ain't no breakthrough. Why, why would there be a breakthrough if you ain't doing nothing? Why would there be a harvest if you ain't planting nothing? Now, you can shout from here to glory if you want, but there, if, if there is no activity between you and God, that's nothing. He says it's more blessed to give than to receive. So your blessing comes from your giving doing something but everybody running around because they said in the morning or touch it or touch and agree you can touch and agree all you want but if you don't put your hand in your pocket and sew something in you just holding hands I know Roger mad at me I know Roger mad at me last week I preached the message Roger said ain't nobody joining on a message like that Ain't nobody joining. Matter of fact, I noticed that the comments stopped at 19 last week. It was 19. Usually it's 40, 50 comments. It was 19. It was a done deal. And I tell him like I tell y'all, I, I don't preach for all that. I preach because here's the truth. I would rather you don't show up, but when you do, you understand this. So it says it's more blessed to give than receive. The person blessed is not just blessed. He, she, them, they are more blessed. More. The person blessed. The person that's given. The person. You know, it says that's what it says. It says more blessed. So, 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 so. If if I'm going to if I'm going to be one of the two, I want to be the given. I want to be the giver because the giver is more blessed. Because it seems to me, maybe not in all cases, but in a lot of them, the receiver needs the blessing. And it's coming from the giver. And if the giver can do it and still be in stride with whatever they got going on in their life, then it's more blessed to give. Don't be putting my business out there on the street, but then don't create business. My daughter needed some help with her rent. I was able to give it. It's more blessed to give than receive. She was the receiver. She could be mad all she want, but she wasn't mad when she was receiving it. And now that you receive it, here's the story. Because see, when you ask me, I get to give you some instructions. See, she maintaining her own, she's doing her own thing. Fine, okay, cool. This is no problem. But the moment you now step into my arena, I get to go and examine and look at some stuff to give you some examples and some instructions and tell you, isn't it funny that you always need but yet you always asking me and I'm always able to deliver. I'm only able to deliver because I understand the principles of giving because I understood the truth. I didn't fool myself. I didn't wait for no cause. I understood the connection. The connection is between me and God and what he has placed in my heart and what I have seen that is evident by my giving. So yes, I can help you. So it says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. For those receiving to be blessed, they got to understand who is the giver. We're just the vessel. God is the giver. God is the giver. I'm just the vessel that he used to help you out of that situation to receive. And in receiving, you shouldn't be honoring me. You should be honoring God. It just so happens I just happen to be your daddy. But you got to understand God made it possible. Now, now y'all probably say, well, how did, how did God make it possible? But let me show you how, let me show you how God makes this whole thing possible. <laughs> y'all can ask Roger about this too at the end of the service. My daughter needed, but I didn't have what she needed. But I trust God. And I went on and did what she needed me to do, not knowing where I was going to get it from, but I knew I was going to get it because God takes care of those who give. And she was need, and she needed help. And God knows what we all need. And all of a sudden, I'd already told my agency, look, I can't miss a lot of Saturdays. I can miss some. I can't miss a lot. So boom, two trips in a row, weekdays, don't miss Saturday, can be here to preach the message and take care of the need. Why? Because God does it. 
and it's activated by you. Now, if you got a whole lot of money in the bank and you don't think you ever gonna be in this situation, keep living. Keep living. Keep living. Keep living. You better learn how to stay humble. Better learn how to stay humble. Why? Because humility is the key. See, when you give, you grow. Your, your, your harvest is expanded, and then when they grow, get you what you get to do. You keep, you keep going. You go. Go. So let me wrap this up. Let me wrap it up. Let me wrap it up. Let me wrap it up. It says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Why would this be true? Why, why, why would that be more blessed to give than to Shouldn't both of them be equal? I mean, we no, one has and one doesn't. That's why they're asking. That lady on that rock at Home Depot is asking. Now, I truly believe that if she began to receive from people who bless her, and then she began to sow and give and stop leaning on what she thinks she has, I believe God going to turn some things around in her life, and pretty soon she's going to be on the other side riding past and helping. But again, they don't do that because all they do is extract. They just receive, 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 and they never give. So if it's more blessed to give, then guess what? We should be thankful we can give. We should be thankful we can give because our giving blesses others. We should be thankful to, to be able to sow into a ministry that has a history, has an example of doing what? Ministry, sowing back into others, helping others, being there for others, making sure that the word of God is preached truthfully and that people understand why they give. It ain't about a cause, it's about a connection. But if it's gonna be about a cause, is not Jesus the greatest cause in the world to give? what he has done for you, what he has brought you through, would that not be enough to give? Should anybody have to prompt you based upon him waking you up this morning, him keeping you in your right mind? How about he died? How about he left an inheritance for you? How is that not cause enough? Why do we have to try to keep finding gimmicks and games? We're not playing those games. Here's the word of God. Connect to it if you choose to. If not, that's between you and God. It ain't my job to force feed this into you. My job is to give it to you truthfully. Your job is to hear it and figure out where you're going to apply it, accept it, or reject it. Why? Because you have free will. It's a choice. So the act of giving has to be done with pure motives. That's the only reason you should give. You should give because it's pure. You should give because you're connected. And when you give, God blesses you and you are are rewarded. How do you know I'm rewarded? Because it's more blessed to give, meaning that's give times give. So that could be considered giving to the second power over receiving. It's still good to receive, but it's far more blessings in the giving. But you give. How do you give? You give out of your abundance. I gave out of my heart to help my daughter and then God swooped in and gave me an abundance to not only cover that, cover some other the things that I have been asking him Lord when are you going to cover these things so I can put more of my focus in ministry well here you go this is what you need most times the receiver is in want or distress but they can be led out of despair by your heart to give don't you understand not only is it a blessing to give but it's in your heart and we can lead people to Christ just based upon your faithfulness to understand your assignment on this side which is to do what share the gospel help somebody in need and I guarantee you if we do those two things people will connect to this ministry people's lives will change giving will grow and I don't have to have cash app Venmo PayPal I I don't have to have none of that. They'll want to give because they see the blessings that are resonating right out of the house of God. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. God bless you and may heaven so richly fall upon you. The word of God is truth when preached and taught. Truthfully, no strings attached. Here's the word of God. The reason why 
I believe all men and women of God ought to do that is because with truth, your foundation solid. Solid. When my father told me in 1980, it's 1988, 1988, my father said, son, your career is going nowhere until you learn to give God his. You know what I said? Look here, man. You already got a Lincoln Town car. Because you know we look at people's stuff. We look at people's stuff and we figure out what kind of stuff they have, whether or not they need it based on the stuff. I said, look, man, you already got, you can tell that to your parishioners. I'm like 22 years old. Uh, he said, son, I'm just going to tell you. Y you ain't going nowhere. So he had said it a few times. And I remember I had taken a trip. And we all do this. I ain't the only one. You know, you get your money. You figure out all you can pay. And then you're left with whatever's left. And you try to use your own mathematics to pay everything. But you just can't. Because you ain't got enough. And I remember I had paid all the bills I could pay. And I had 50 bucks. And I came back in on a Saturday night. I was going to church. Because at that time my dad was living right next door to the church up in York, Pennsylvania. And so... The Holy Spirit convicted me and said, try it. Try it. I'm like, man, I, ain't, I got $50 left. I ain't got no work in the books. Nothing. At that time, I'm still starting out as a comic. I ain't got no work in the book. I got 50 bucks and a tithe. Because at that time, my father was teaching tithing. He changed it later. But at that time, he was teaching tithe. Tithe would be $35. And I'm like, man, I ain't never gave past five. I gave two dollars. Every once in a while, I throw five in. You couldn't tell me I ain't done nothing. So I said, all right, Lord. All right, I'm going to put my tithe in. $35. I'll never forget it. And then I said, I'm going to put an extra five in it to back up the 35. Now, if you ever gamble, you play blackjack, you're supposed to put some money behind your black, in case the dealer get blackjack so you don't lose your money. So that's in my mind. That's what I was thinking. I'm going to put this extra five in it to back up the 35. Now I got $10 left and no work. The next morning, never forget it, Rick Hedgie called me. He said, hey, Roddy Johns, this is Rick Hedgie from Comedy Cabaret. I said, hey, how you doing? He said, man, you showcased at our club on Friday. They said you did a great job. We want to book you. He said, what are your avails? I'm like, dude, I'm open. He said, good. He said, this week we're going to put you at King of Pressure. Next week we're going to put you at Doyle's Town. Then we're going to put you in Allentown. And the dude gave me six weeks of work. And I jumped up and said, Daddy, this stuff works. i never forget it. I wrote him a check. I added up all the weeks. It was coming out to $1,500. I wrote him a post-dated check. I said, Daddy, hold this check. And on this week, put it in. And I never looked back. That was it. Hook, line, single, soul, transform, call it whatever you want. Never, ever, ever look back. Was a giver from that. And also giving of time, sharing with people my experience, my journey. So I remember my buddy. He said, man, how come you so successful at this, man? We started out together. I said, man, all I do is give. He said, what's that? And I told him. I told him. And then he did it. And he called me, man. This giving, man, I was able to quit my job. And then he was in a car accident. i never forget, he got a check for $12,000. And I said, man, you, you, know, you know you're supposed to give off that now. I'm just telling you, that's some new money. But in his mind, he was up. 12 grand, he ain't gonna never be broke again. He's like, man, I don't know about all that. About a month and a half late, he called me. I'm talking about, man, let me hold a couple of dollars. I said, why? He said, man, I'm trying to get that tied together off of that insurance check. I'm trying to put that money in now. And then he went on and, you know, lived his life and did the same thing. So it's given. It's given. That's what it's about. The giving, you got to understand, blesses you. We just get the benefit. When you sow into Esau, I, my job is easy. I get, to, I, get to, I get to write the checks, and I ain't got to, I ain't got to struggle. And the checks have always cleared. Thank God. <laughs> I ain't never had to tell nobody, can you hold this to Friday? So with that being said, now the doors of the church are open. Here at Asaph Community Church, we're serving the giving begins. If you'd like to be a member, all you have to do is fill out this card. Now Karen was a member. 
And then she moved away. But she didn't forget about us. And then she came back. And she said, Pastor, I'm going to rejoin Asa. Now, what she didn't know is I never got rid of her car. So she don't have to fill out another car. But Karen has reestablished herself as a member of Asa Community Church. We love her. She's been uh, gentle. She's always been uh, quiet spoken, but very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. So we enjoy having her spirit here at Asa Community Church. And when she calls me, she'll, she'll say, Pastor, it's real soft. And you can't even refuse her. I don't care what she asks me, we're going to do it. Because of the way she calls, you know. You know, I'm just, I was trying. Gary, you ain't got to do all that. What you need? Oh, okay. We'll take care of it. We'll get some out. Somebody going to do something. We're, we're going to get it done. Because the one thing that she does is she never demands. She always asks. And when somebody asks, you can't refuse. I, I tell men all the time, if men learn how to ask, we get a lot of stuff done. Like men won't, like I'll call men and say, hey, babe, would it be possible you to pick me up and take me to the airport? That's ask. This is what men do. Yo, man, pick me up and take you to the airport tomorrow at 12. And you know what men do? I mean, who do you think you're talking to? You got to ask. If you ask, man, we, we can do a lot. So with that being said and done, thank you, Karen, for coming back to us. And we know God has some things in store for you. We're just here to be a part of whatever he blesses you with. We're here for you. Every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock is our Tuesday town hall. You should just get on the call. You ain't got to say nothing, but just listen. Now, this is what I'm really challenging. I'm, I'm challenging for 2023. Any woman that's married, at least one of the Tuesday times, get your husband on the call. Get your husband there. It, it, listen, if both of y'all are there, husband and wife, make sure you make a TikTok of this. Husband and wife, let me, I'll stop, I'll slow it down. Slow, slow it down, I'll slow it down. Here's the importance. You ready? Here's the importance of having husband and wives at Bible study and church together. Because if you're under the same word, you can discuss it. If you're not, then somebody is telling somebody, and that's, that's, not, that's not good. And men don't take instructions. So you can't go and tell, what the pastor said, and this is what we said. He's going to go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, did you cook those chicken wings? So it's good to be there together. So Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And when it comes to giving, I don't have to say no more. Baby, just put it up for everybody. Here's how you can give. If you're here, you can give in the envelopes, put it in the containers at the end. If not, you can go to this website right here, asawcc.org. First time you do it, you're going to have to set up a profile. It's going to take you two to three minutes. If you have a problem, call me, and then we'll call it in at the 800 number, and they'll walk you through. It's very simple. And you can just give this way anytime you want, whenever you want. And you're sowing into a ministry. Now, my wife said to that plant, that I had the discussion about is called the snake plant. When you see the snake plant in Esau, it will come from the first person that we do not know that gives to our ministry. Why should they give? Because they're being blessed by it. How do you know they're being blessed? Because they're watching every week. If we got 100 views and we ain't got but 12 members, who the other 88? Now, I ain't begging for your money. I ain't got no cards. But there is a connection because you come past here to listen because something is resonating with you. You know, I don't know, maybe this year, next year, I don't know. But what we do with it is, 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 is make the improvements so that you can see the service better, clearer, and without the static we were having. So I know for a fact the last two weeks it's been good. Why? Because we just paid a company to come in and put in a new camera and a new system, and we're paying for this monthly thing to upload all of that stuff, and we ain't even tech people. But God has blessed us. <laughs> so again, thank everyone, the members and the friends of ASAR. Thankful for LaDonna for reading the welcome. Thankful for Jeanette being on sound. Thankful for the other Jeanette leading us in praise and worship. And thankful for my two brothers that keep me over here. Mr. Teddy Wright, and Mr. Jerry Black, and thankful for my man, David Fry. Always good to have my brother in the house. And Roger, you know how we roll. We just roll like that. Father God, keep us and protect us until our paths cross again. In Jesus' name, amen.